Hello, Cliff Stanwick, Stanwick Real Estate, and I thought I would just give a market update on Loomis and South Placer Real Estate in California. I'm an independent broker. That's the area I pretty much work. I've been living in Loomis since 2002 and uh, ran a business in Loomis since 1991, so I'm pretty familiar with South Placer and all the awesome stuff of living here and um, like I shared before I, I live in and in, um, in Loomis with my wife we have a little small ranch and we raise our kids here and you know it's just a great area to live but you know as we look at this market you know it's definitely different and the interest rates have doubled and as I uh, shared in an earlier YouTube um, we're dealing with a standoff of the sellers aren't ready to let go of their property because of of uh, the prices that they were selling last year and buyers because of the unaffordability, i.e. the interest rates have doubled and all the other associated costs, whether it's insurance and, um, and property taxes, they're just not going to go back to the summer. But I think it's kind of important to, um, you know, take a look at, at some of the data out there. And I want to share my screen. This is a tool that, uh, that real estate uh, professionals, alleged real estate professionals use uh, to look at the market. And um, it can be kind of an eye chart, you know, but um, this is kind of interesting. And this is the average price. So uh, you look at the number of, of, of houses out there and uh, it gives us today's stats. And uh, today's stats are basically, or the current versus the same, um, the, the, the average price is still up 2.1%, uh, you know, versus a year ago. And, um, the, um, average sold price is down 1.4. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're, 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 we're all thinking that this market is all of a sudden going to just crater. Right. And, um, it's kind of interesting. This chart over here, we'll look at, um, Again, last year, which was uh, 1221, the prices were 668, and they were just about um, listing and selling at the same price. And what's kind of interesting is the prices kept going up, right? And the the sold prices kept going up, but in spite of every house seeming to be multiple offers and going over list price, that isn't reflected in the data, right? And so the data is always skewed a little bit, right? Because it's so dependent on where you're looking to buy your house, what amenities are with the house. I mean, if your house had a pool last year, it was $100,000 more than a house without a pool, right? And again, you know, if the lot was bigger, if the house was newer, so you, you really got to be careful looking at the numbers. But what the numbers are telling you is that basically that the market started with uh, 668 in January, it peaked at about 718. That was in July. And July is when the prices went really high. And then look at the uh, for sale prices. 718 went to 720, went to 727, went to 733. Now, the last three months is not the time to buy a house, right? It's just not the time to buy a house. But what's interesting is the prices have, list prices have remained uh, pretty strong. The sold prices uh, went down to as low as 624, right? So you all of a sudden you think, oh, the market is cratering. But they went up like 20 some odd thousand dollars in December, right? And I think this is looking at the average price, right? And then if you look at for sale versus sold here, right? This is this is looking at, we've seen inventory, people were really busting to get their houses out in July in, in Roseville, 425 houses. And then at the end of the year, the inventory fell all the way down to 258 and 1222. And the properties last year there was 96 so we have a we have a lot of inventory we got 250 percent more inventory right and again this is kind of reflected in uh in the numbers right and 
I think the more interesting thing going on right now is this uh, this thing about inventory, right? Uh, we saw where people uh, were doing the hybrid living and remote working at the beginning of the year. We saw COVID basically change uh, by by the first quarter to June. Uh, we saw more people uh, going back out on the market, uh, starting to resume life. And again, two point less than three months is typically a normal ice market okay so we're, we're now seeing a normalized market right so what is the kind of the takeaway from this is that we're seeing a normalized market we're seeing home affordability being a big factor meaning the interest rates are high at six and uh, in my opinion they're, they may crest seven in the next month i hope it doesn't happen but it, it may they may crest that uh and so this is essentially we're probably until we get back to the inventories being what they were in July, you know, this market isn't swimming in inventory. And that's pretty much, um, you know, the the talk here. Now, one of the big problems that I see with real estate is, you know, the statistics that are shared with with um, with buyers and sellers and the statistics that are that are shared with buyers and sellers, uh, in my opinion, that are kind of, of, of interesting is average versus median, right? So what you'll notice is that the average sales price like in Roseville is 631,000, but the median price is 593,000, uh, uh, which means what? Uh, it means half the houses selling for more and half the houses selling for less. And the average is the total amount of what the average price is. So Roseville, you can see the market activity is down by 29 homes versus, you know, the, the last data. But the average price is up at 631, right? And that is based on the last 30 days where we're looking at data on the trend vision that's totally different, right? So that this is the market snapshot that, again, I've done on a video that you can look at. Uh, but if we go look at uh, Loomis, for example, um, where I live, um, you're seeing very few houses, only seven houses. But the average house is a million dollars, but the median sales price is 600000 So that means the high-end market is pretty much pulling... Uh, pulling up the average, but the activity in the market is a little bifurcated here, right? There's there there's probably two or three two million dollar sales, and then the other ones are all under you know are on the low end, right? So you look at this, and you got fifty thousand dollars down on the average sales price, where in Roseville you had it up, right? Well, let's go, uh, let's look at uh, Lincoln, right? Uh, just for the sake of looking at it. Um, we look at Lincoln and Lincoln is saying, again, the sold volumes down, but the average price is up 25,000, but the median sales price is down, um, in, um, in down to 601. So what does that mean? Right? Well, that means there's more homes being sold in the low end and in the high end. Right. And, in uh, that's what that means. Right. And that's the case, but we're still seeing really strong uh, sales. So let's go back and because we've been talking mostly about Roseville, let's just go look and see um, again on this market snapshot. I have you can look at what the recently uh, sold prices are down here. So we have a house that sold for list. We had a house that sold for uh, $85,000 less. We had a house sold for 159. That was new construction. Here's a house that really didn't get discounted. Here's a low end kind of, um, you know, uh, 55 community in Roseville trailer, I, uh, like a mobile home park, 10 grand. So, you know, that's less than 1%. Um, eight, 29,000 down on 810. Uh, so that's, again, that's roughly a little over 3%. Here's one that's only down 16,000. 
on 584. So that's less than 3%. So we did see houses in this market um, sell for less money. But again, look at the time period of, of the market, right? The time period of the market was it's um, is that it's the it's the low, slowest time of the year. You know, every year uh, Christmas comes and guess what? Or Thanksgiving comes or the holidays come and guess what? Houses don't sell. No. Who is moving over the holidays? The answer is no one. So you can't really look at the prices per se and look at um, anything other than this is probably the most indicative chart here, which is the average price for sale and sold. We're not seeing the crazy market collapsing here, right? They were 668 a year ago. They're selling for 643. That's literally a 3% difference. Don't look at the for sale price here. Look at the sold price, right? The sold price is what we need to be cognizant of, right? 718. It went from 668 to 718. And now it's uh, or down to seven eighteen, and now it's at it's at six forty three, right? But that's an average. So, at the end of the end of this whole process, I guess the thing I'm trying to say here is the market is going to be the market. Sellers are not ready to let their houses go. Buyers aren't ready to pay more for the property. So until that changes, it's kind of going to be you got to hope that the interest rates drop which I do not think is going to happen. Uh, we're going to get an inflation report tomorrow, and I think the Fed is going to stick to their guns and continue to bump interest rates up. But I think the market is in this area is just going to hold kind of firm. Nice houses are going to sell. If your house isn't nice and need a, uh, a bunch of repairs, uh, you're not going to get your list price. It's really that simple. So um, I hope you found this somewhat beneficial. Um, if there's anything I can do for you, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I look forward to continuing to generate some content like this. And um, I hope that uh, we can work together in the future. With that, have a great day. And that's it.